Good evening. It's 6 o'clock on Saturday, January 14th, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. 731 prisoners left their prison cells today, benefiting from the government's amnesty decree. The Minister of Justice was at Tirana's prison, number 325, where 10 women were liberated. The minister appealed for the women to be reintegrated into society. I can assure you that these women were re-educated and that they can be reintegrated into society as free people who have suffered their punishment for something they did under particular circumstances. These people cannot be judged. Albania society should welcome them, said the Minister of Justice, who offered an appeal to the Minister of Social Welfare to keep his promise of finding jobs for the women in order to integrate them back into society. I am ready to issue recommendations for job positions as needed, of course, in legal jobs, because cannabis and other illegal jobs are not an option. I hope the Minister of Social Welfare keeps his promise, added the Minister of Justice. 731 prisoners were liberated under the amnesty initiated by the Ministry of Justice. Hundreds of prisoners all around Albania are benefiting from the President's decree on amnesty. In Fier, 152 prisoners were set free. They were imprisoned for different criminal offenses such as cannabis cultivation, domestic violence, or robbery. They were all satisfied to leave prison cells and return to their family members who were waiting for them outside the prison. From Burrell's high security prison, 24 prisoners were freed. Though they were convicted for murder, there was only a year left to finish their sentences. From the Fushkruya prison, 20 prisoners left their cells to join their families. And from Lushnia's prison, 53 prisoners were given amnesty. Their relatives were also waiting for them outside the prison building. 55 prisoners left Dranova's prison. They were all excited to leave the cells and start a new life. And 117 prisoners were liberated from Lesia's prison. Now that they are freed, a new challenge awaits these amnestied convicts, returning back to normal life. Vice Prosecutor General is expected to be elected on Monday by the Prosecutor General in a meeting held in the prosecution. However, Mr. Manya, a socialist MP and a member of the Ad Hoc Commission on Judicial Reform, says electing the Vice Prosecutor General this way is illegal. He says the procedure should be made by the new Prosecutor General, who will be elected according to the new judicial reform laws. If this happens, then it will be a serious violation of the law by the Prosecutor General. The Constitution and the law on prosecution clearly stipulate the procedure for how the Vice Prosecutor should be elected and who elects him. The Vice Prosecutor General should be elected by the new Prosecutor General, who is to be elected by the Supreme Council of the Prosecutor. During this phase of the judicial reform, the Prosecutor General can only appoint temporary magistrates and any other appointments would be in violation of the law, declared the Socialist MP. He added that having the new judicial reform laws enter into force without the new justice institutions being established does not hamper the prosecution or the court's work. The Socialist MP said, these claims are being made by people who comment on the judicial reform from the outside or those who do not want it. But I am glad the reform is properly understood by the prosecutors and judges who are doing their job. The MP also commented on the lack of publication by the Constitutional Court on its decision regarding the judicial reform. The Constitutional Court has not publicized its decision on the judicial reform yet. I do not understand why the decision has not been publicized. The failure to publicize the decision has delayed the reform. The Constitutional Court must become more active with the judicial reform, concluded the Socialist MP. The Party for Justice, Integrity and Unity MP, Masila Doda, is asking the Albanian Parliament to establish an ad hoc commission to deal with the CHOM issue. The MP deposited the request with Parliament on December 20, 2016. 
According to MP Dota, Parliament is expected to review his request in the upcoming plenary session. The PJIU MP declared that shedding light on the crimes made against the Cham community is necessary. The ad hoc commission should gather evidence and find those responsible for the violent repatriation of Cham Albanians and for the massacre of 1944. The Party for Justice, Integrity and Unity's request has discovering all circumstances as the main subject, declared MP Dota. The Democratic Party considers Tirana's urban plan as a city hall affair. According to the Democratic City Councilor, Mr. Aliai, experts were not consulted concerning the urban plan. During an open discussion with some experts and civil society, the Democrats declared that other strategic projects of City Hall are corrupt affairs. The Democrat Councilor declared that he has felt alone in his arguments against some projects, and because of this, he will reconsider his mandate in the City Council. Meanwhile, the Director of Infrastructure and Transport Department, who is in the Democratic Party, raised his concern about the heavy traffic in the capital caused by the work for reconstructing Skanderbeg Square. The environmentalists gave their arguments against some city hall projects which they feel are alienating public spaces. The Association of Builders believes Tirana's urban plan is an important project which they feel sets the rules and new criteria for building areas. The Secretary General of the Builders Association thinks that Tirana needs the downtown projects because having multiple story buildings will occupy less public space. The Secretary General also urged City Hall to invest in constructing public buildings, which according to him would bring more life to the capital. On the other hand, the builders are not satisfied with the infrastructure tax, which City Hall increased from 4% to 8%. Tirana's urban plan was approved in December during the City Hall Council meeting. It is now expected to be approved by the National Territory Council in order to be implemented. Trade exchanges between Albania and Kosovo have seen a decrease in the last two years, triggering the Chambers of Commerce leaders to propose creating joint economic offices to deal with difficulties entrepreneurs are facing. Heads of the Albanian and Kosovar Chambers of Commerce have declared that regional competition and political developments are affecting the economic development between the two countries. The new economic offices, which are expected to start operating on Monday, are hoping to deal with the hurdles being faced by entrepreneurs trying to make trade exchanges between Albania and Kosovo. Both Chambers of Commerce leaders propositioned the Albanian and Kosovar governments to remove customs obligations between the two countries and to draft a strategic plan for national economy relations for the promotion and enhancement of procedures for using complementary resources. That's all for our English edition this evening. Please join us again Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. for your local news in English. My name is Mari, and on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.